Hey you guys, just before we get into today's video, I want to let you know that there are heavy spoilers in this review. If you have not played Returnal and don't want to be spoiled, then I would highly advise playing the game before watching my review or waiting until the spoiler-free version comes out in a little bit. Since there are going to be two versions from now on, a spoiler-free version and a spoiler-heavy version, you guys have your choice of which one you want to listen to and watch the most. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the video. Have a good one. The cycle of the soul, the helpless fight, a willful sacrifice. Throughout this third-person roguelike horror game, Selene's torment in Maternal has created an eternity of unrest and unease for a human mourning the loss of her mind, the loss of her child, and corrupted relationship with her mother, which is driving most of this story. This game dives into the deepest part of the psyche and the soul where the root of Selene's trauma lies. I will go there now as you will. What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome to my review of Returnal. So imagine this, if Hades and Dark Souls had a baby, you, you get Returnal. <laughs> It has aspects of a roguelike game, yet is fair and completely different from a lot of horror games and games in general that I've ever played. Returnal creates an undeniable atmosphere for the player to get lost in and lose themselves as they try to find Selene's sanity in the madness. Returnal pulled me in and gently suffocated me with its beauty, subtle horror, and writing style of there is no past or future, so I need to deal with the present and how it is shown to me. Returnal is a new type of horror game that creates a manageable challenge and not spoon-feeding the player at every interval. This game tells the player, you will die. But that's the point. You need to die in this game in order to advance the story, much like Souls games and Hades. Every crash of Helios, every audio log that I heard brought Celine closer to the truth of just accepting you know, what she's done, who she is, rather than hiding from it. The cycle started to act as a comfort zone of sorts for her, I feel, as she started to get closer and closer to the abyss. I feel like in each audio log that we hear in the game, she is more comfortable which with each run that she does adapting to the environments around her each one kind of knowing her before she can really deeply know herself this is the first time that i've seen a game all based in theory when we look at a lot of very theory driven games they have a point to them that it all circles around whether or not that the game is based in all theory or whether or not that the game is based in all fact for the universe that is in there is still one point that drives the entire story. The crash between Celine and her mother, the crash between Celine and her child. Now to me, other than the crash, the cycles, the alien technology, it's all a lie. We have glimpses of a woman named Thea, which I'm guessing is her mother, seeing the mother, Celine's child. Bits of notes I find in the haunted house are scattered all like puzzle pieces just waiting to be put together. There are dozens of theories surrounding this game, but my theory is that Thea and Celine got into a car crash, then years later Celine and her child got into a car crash. That's the cycle. That's the trauma that won't give up its grip on Celine because she, after all of these years, was trying to break a terrible family cycle where she didn't mean much to the mother. But reading the stone slabs that are seen, Celine wanted to have a child to almost prove that she could be a better mother. So this is where we get into some of the mechanics because I feel like in this game in particular, the mechanics are some of the best I have ever seen in any game besides Assassin's Creed Valhalla and besides Sifu. Sifu had incredible control work. You could almost see the buttery, textury goodness that came out of it. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, everything was intuitive. The controls were just buttery. Everything felt like it was kind of like an extension of the player almost. It was that simple. Same goes for Returnal. As a shooting game, Returnal is absolutely magnificent. Returnal has an ease to it that is made only by the choices that you make in how each run is approached. For example, for close encounters, you can utilize a spitball, but for longer range attacks, the Electro Pylon Driver works wonders and does half the work for you. And if you're a fan of the Rutland Lava, you're going to love this one. During the boss battles of this game, it will be as easy or as difficult as you make it for yourself. Since ease is subjective, each boss will vary for each player. For example, I had such a difficult time with Nemesis, but it was incredibly easy for others. It's the way in which you prepare for the boss battles and the way in which a run is played out that will either work in your benefit or your demise. There are just some runs that need to be started over because either there's a lockdown that you don't want to risk dying in, or there won't be the right items that you will need in a certain 
certain run. There were plenty of runs that I restarted because I needed a certain gun that was a rarity or a parasite that was a rarity that would aid the run tremendously. Now, speaking of parasites, these are some of the most interesting parts of the game. The most interesting things in Returnal. Uh, they have a catch though, which I will warn you guys about. If you pick up a parasite, it's not going to be like, oh, I get full integrity or max integrity. No. What happens is, let's say you do get a parasite that gives you max integrity. That's absolutely incredible. But on the negative side, each time you kill an enemy, it'll leave a pool of acid behind for you to step in. So there are different uh, risk and reward benefits that happen whenever you get these parasites. Uh, I kind of have a theory behind the parasites of where these are the unhealthy attachments that uh, Celine has for the environments around her. She gets different pieces of alien technology that utilize her to go deeper into the abyss, that utilize her to have a grappling hook that give her all of these different unhuman possibilities and capabilities. There are different attachments that just allow her to traverse the land better that she is in in Atropos. And even Celine said, I can't wait to do certain things over again and being attached to this world kind of almost having a masochistic view of it kind of how the player is because you know we are going deeper and deeper into the the psychosis the deeper and deeper into the delusion of what this character is trying to get across in their story, which I think is absolutely fascinating. Personally, I think White Shadow is Selene, since in one of her audio logs near the Hyperion boss battle, it references the shadow you want to see in me every time. Many theories point to White Shadow being Selene's mother since Thea was an astronaut sometime in the 1950s. Other theories suggest that White Shadow is a warning of sorts. Even in the true ending, Selene morphs into what is the White Shadow, to stand in the way of the car, almost as a way to stop Selene. Notice before the car crash, you get a close-up of Celine's eyes. She did not have heterochromia. She did not. And that, and that is either caused by genetics or an accident. Returnal created an atmosphere that got me hooked right from the start. From thinking I just had crash landed on Atropos to understanding with each haunted house that all of this might be a delusion of sorts. Returnal does the horror genre justice with its immersive soundscape, breathtaking visuals, and thought-provoking storylines that allow the player to choose an ending for themselves, essentially. This game exceeded my expectations and brought color and vibrancy to a world of horror. You guys, that was my review on Returnal. If you guys like this video and you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. I make videos every day here on YouTube. May you find your worth in the waking world, your hunter. Stay casually nerdy, and I will see you all in the next video. Umbasa.